Hey there, friends. Welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on knowing what you believe and why you believe it. If you are eager, like I am, to strengthen your faith and take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. You know, after COVID, we would say many people are struggling with what we would call social anxiety. We see this a lot with college students, especially as they uh, immediately came out of COVID. But even still now, many are struggling to make friends, to get out and around others. They kind of feel socially anxious when they're doing this. There's a, still a big feeling of loneliness. As we consider friendship, it is a vital relationship that you and I need. Why is that? Because God created you as a relational being. We see that God is relational. We even see that simply in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is a relationship there. There is a friendship there. And so when it comes to friendship, many times we would have many acquaintances, but very few friends. As we deal with social media, kind of we think we have lots of friends uh, because we have friends and followers and so forth. But friend is a very, very important word. It's one that should be used with caution. And as we come to our passage here in John 15, Jesus pulls up a chair. And I've said this is such an intimate, personal uh, portion of Scripture but he pulls up a chair beside you. He looks you in the eyes. And in our passage here, he says, you're my friend. Think about that. The creator God of the universe says, you're my friend. You're not just a servant. You're not just a robot that I'm controlling because we understand we have free will. He says, look, I want to have a relationship with you and I want to call you a friend. So when you think about a friend, what is a friend to you? Automatically, for me, is someone that's loyal, someone that's loving, obviously someone that's not an enemy. They're for you. You can be you. You can be vulnerable with them. Uh, they're going to sacrifice for you. They're going to sacrifice time. But at the same time, if they're a friend, you have to do the same for them. You see, friendship is a two-way street. You can't always be receiving. The Bible tells us a friend must show himself friendly. But also friends will speak truth to us, even when we don't want to hear it. They'll challenge our thinking or sharpen our thinking. They'll help us to make good decisions. And obviously, if they're a Christian friend, they should be helping us to grow spiritually. We come to our passage here. I'm just going to read three verses. We'll walk down through them. I believe it'll be a great help to you. As we think about this idea of being a friend of Jesus, he says, Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. He's speaking to the disciples. Then he flips it backwards. So he's speaking about being their friend. Now he says, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. So now we're going from us to him. And then verse 15, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. I don't know that I'll ever fully grasp all that is meant in this passage of Scripture. I have thought about it. I have meditated on it. But the personal level that God comes to us with to call us a friend. I mean, when you think about a true friend, and I want to distinguish between, between acquaintances that we still would refer to as friends, people that we meet, we deal with, maybe you know, co-workers and different things. And maybe they are friends, but we want to look at these true friends because we can only have so but so many friends. And Scripture shows us typically it's three or less. You see, Jesus had 12 disciples, but three of them were very close. James, Peter, and John. Job had three friends. David had Jonathan. Paul had Timothy. So if we find ourselves with a friend or a couple of friends, we are blessed. But as we think about friendship, as Jesus speaks about it here, and try to relay it back into the friendship that you and I have with Jesus, friendship involves sacrifice. He says, there's greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So first of all, love is a foundational element of friendship. So friendship, true friendship, requires love. And that love must go both ways. The question is, okay, maybe you are a uh, new believer or maybe you're not a believer. You're just kind of being introduced to Jesus. How can Jesus say that he's my friend? Because we would say one of the key ingredients of true friendship is time. Just because you meet somebody and you have a couple lunches or you spend a little bit of time together doesn't mean they're a true friend. Friendship takes a lot of time to build that relationship. 
to get to know each other, to try each other, to go through hard times, good times, and that friendship can be built, but time is there. How can Jesus say he's my friend? Well, can I say this? God knew you even before you were born. And the Bible tells us that Jesus was there with God before the world was created. So Jesus knew you even before you were born. He created you. He gave you your talents, your personality, your characteristics. So guess what? Jesus knows you better than you know yourself. Jesus loves you. How do we know that? Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus proved his love to you by giving his life for you on the cross. Jesus has every right to be your friend. Jesus has earned to be your friend. He showed you. He's proved it to you. Jesus has spent the time, and he showed the love and sacrifice to prove his friendship to you. Can I say this? He's invested in you. But friendship as a sacrifice sacrifice requires a cost. You see, true friendship is a sacrificial relationship between two people. What does it mean to sacrifice in a friendship? Well, you put that person's needs and wants before your own. Maybe you have to give up something, time money for the other person. Maybe something you like for something they like. In other words, in order to have a friendship, you can't be self-centered. It can't always be about you. Don't expect others to sacrifice if you don't sacrifice for them. But Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice. And friendship requires sacrifice. But friendship also involves obedience. He said, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. So we understand this obedience is conditional. Jesus is your friend, but it is your choice to be his friend. He said, I will not force you. I will not make you. I will not even beg you. But I will demonstrate to you that I am your friend. And you can respond however you want to. He says, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. And so the the first step to becoming friends with Jesus is to receive the free gift of salvation. But the next step is to be loyal to him and his word. We've talked a lot about this idea of being loyal to Jesus, because if you're loyal to him, you're going to follow his word. You're going to follow his word in the face of adversity. You're going to follow his word in the face of trials. You're going to stay true to him and his word. Why? Because you're loyal to him, because that's what friends do. And so Jesus ultimately says here to prove our friendship to him. How do we prove our friendship to him? It's by doing his commandments. It's by following his word, following his teachings, doing what he has commanded us. And there's a strong emphasis here. Why does Jesus require obedience as a test of friendship? That's interesting. But obedience displays loyalty. If we can't be obedient to him, then we're not being loyal to him. How can you be friends with someone you're not aligned with? Have you ever had a friend fail you, uh, mistreat you, betray you? And sometimes that's hard, right? Because sometimes that can break a friendship. Sometimes it does not. You grow through that. But imagine Jesus. Think about that. Friends with Peter. Friends with James and John. In his deepest moment of need, there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, would y'all pray with me? And what happened? They went off and took a nap. Jesus, though, they're sweating drops of blood battling, struggling, and he comes back and finds them asleep. And he says, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not pray with me just for a little bit? Hey, I'm going to go back and pray. Y'all please pray for me. What do they do? They go back and go to sleep again. I mean, that's friends, right, asking to pray for you, and they just, they don't. They, uh, they pass out. And then Peter, there after Jesus is arrested, denies he even knows him. You're talking about betrayal. What about Judas? who betrays him not with just a handshake, but with a kiss. That would be our modern-day handshake. Shake somebody's hand and then turn them over to the cops because you betrayed them. I wonder how Jesus felt. But Jesus still says this to these very people that just did this, or were going to do this, excuse me. Jesus is sitting down at the table right before. He's just had uh, the supper with them. They're getting up. They're walking toward the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, "Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And he says, look, you're my friends because I'm laying down my life for you. I'm not going to call you servants. I'm going to call you friend, even though I know you're getting ready to betray me. 
You see, we can look at people and we can struggle with friendships, practically speaking, because somebody may betray us and so forth. But do you know how many times we've betrayed Jesus? How many times we've not followed his word, yet he still tells us, you are my friend. There is nothing that you can do to destroy the friendship that Jesus has with you. You can't do it enough times. You can't fail. You can't sin enough to destroy the friendship that Jesus has for you and with you. You see, friendship also involves availability. Jesus said, look, I'm not going to call you servants because a servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I'm calling you friends. I am available to you anytime. You have the servant And sometimes they're hard to get in touch with. You have a boss maybe at work, and sometimes you have to schedule an appointment. Maybe they're not available all the time. You think about a president or a superior. Uh, Maybe it's more of a working relationship. But Jesus says, look, that's not the relationship that we have. I am available to you. I'm going to communicate with you because friendship is what? It's communication. It's transparency. It's being real. Jesus kept nothing back. He said, everything I've heard of my Father, I'm making known unto you. There are no secrets He reveals everything from his father and he's available to you as much or as little as you want, but it's up to you. That's the condition. You're my friends. If circle the, if you do whatsoever, I command you. But if Jesus is available to us and he's our friend in order for friendship, it's a two way street. You and I need to be available to Jesus as friends of Jesus. We need to make ourselves available to him and his kingdom. How do we do that? We do that in prayer. That's communication. We're talking to him in his word. We're listening to him. In our surrender to him, that is sacrifice. And in our service to him, that's how we can make ourselves available to Jesus. But I want to ask you as we finish off here, are you a friend of Jesus? What type of friend are you to Jesus at this very moment? Are you a good friend? Are you a loyal friend? And what type of friend do you think Jesus is to you? because that's the type of friend that you need to be back to him. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, please share it with a friend or subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.